In this video I'll be starting to build the wing in ground effect flying machine. I've done some water testing, some microlight flying and some design calculations. I'm very excited to start building after a couple of months of research and the help from various people. After driving the boat in the field I now want to know how well it drives in the water. This may be a shock to some people but this boat actually works quite well in the water. It didn't sink once which is great news. I've got my dad as a willing passenger and my mum with a camera. I was also very lucky to have two new friends of mine with me who have airboats. This is Piers. And this is Fiona. It was really great to have two other boats around just in case I broke down. Piers actually designed and built these airboats from scratch and they are beautifully made. He has a business in Plymouth called Airboat UK where he designs and builds airboats and wind machines. I'll put a link in the description to his website. There were a couple of things I wanted to test on the water. How fast will it go is the first thing. The speed it can reach will help establish what size wings I need. No point building wings that require a takeoff speed of faster than the boat can go. The second thing I want to know is how well the boat handles. The top speed then. I would say the top speed for two people on board is around 30 to 32 miles per hour. This is Piers showing us how fast his airboat can go if you have more like 120 horsepower and a lightweight design. With just one person, my boat can achieve around 35 miles an hour. So I'm thinking a takeoff speed of 30 miles an hour might be something to aim for. Of course, the boat would be starting to lift out the water before 30 miles an hour, and this will reduce the drag the water is having on the boat. But there will also be extra profile drag and induced drag from the addition of the wings and tail. I don't know how these drag forces are going to balance out and how that is going to affect reaching the required speed. I've put some sheets across 6 meter poles to get an idea of what this machine is going to look like and how it's going to work. These are only 6 meter poles but it's looking like at least an 8 meter span is going to be required. The wings are currently positioned so that the centre of pressure of the wing aligns with the centre of mass of the boat. This will need thinking about because in ground effect the centre of pressure is much further back than the 25% cord it would normally be out of ground effect. This means that as you increase height above the water, the centre of pressure moves forward and the nose will want to rise. It might therefore be wise to try and bring the centre of mass forward relative to the wing. While I'm thinking about how best to approach decisions like this, I've had some fixed wing lessons at Somerset Microlights in an Icarus C42 and here we are about to take off. The C42 has a lovely sound to it. That 27 litre V12 Rolls Royce Merlin engine and the C42 really gives it great performance for a microlight. It certainly draws in the crowds to watch. I'm really enjoying the fixed wing lessons and I hope to keep doing it. A microlight gets buffeted around much more than an R22 due to the big difference in wing loading. Helicopter rotor tips are travelling at hundreds of miles an hour and the wing tip of the microlight is only travelling at 100 miles an hour maximum. Talking of helicopters, we were sat in the garden one evening at home and a military helicopter landed in the field close by. A rare occasion for this to happen and I thought it was just great. The sound and the drama was just awesome. It really made me want to fix mine and do some more hovering. I'll do this a Cranoplan build first and then give it some more thought. I need to keep an eye on the weights and check the Polaris Fib weighs what it's supposed to. By my measurements, it's 20 kilograms heavier than advertised. I'm not sure what's going on there as I've calibrated my scales up to 100 kilograms. The next thing I need to check is how low can the wing be before it drags in the water. I want it low to the water for increased efficiency, but certainly don't want it touching the water. I can confirm that even with two people on board and a wingtip float, the height shown here has plenty of clearance to the water. Also, these wheels, as great as they are at facilitating entry and exit to the water, weigh 30 kilograms, and that is weight I could really do without, so they will be removed. Well, I've just ordered some aluminium to start building, and as with the start of the helicopter project, I need to make a bending die for that size I've ordered. For the last two bending dies I made, I also made a tool to machine the radius of the tube, which is extra work. This time I thought I'd try something different using my digital readout. My mill digital readout has a function which will tell you the coordinates of a pitch circle diameter, like if you wanted to drill the stud hose for a wheel. 
I told it I wanted 80 holes and the first 40 would be half the diameter, which will give me the groove tool plunge coordinates. It worked well and despite looking long winded, it didn't take that long. It's a bit rough, but that can be smoothed out with a file, certainly quicker than making another radius tool. I'm planning to go for a wing loading of around 29 kilograms per meter squared. That should give me a takeoff speed of around 30 miles an hour with the wing in ground effect. The construction of the wings are planned to be an aluminium tubular spars and seekinite wing covering, something like this. The tail will be the same type construction, but I need to decide what size horizontal stabilizer, what size elevator, and the same for the vertical stabilizer and rudder, then how far aft it needs to be for effective control. I would particularly like to thank Martin Garrish for all the design help I've been receiving. I'm okay at building things, but need help when it comes to complex design decisions. You can build by copying what others have done, but you might also be copying their mistakes. So best to do what you can to make the right decisions.